You may have found this video because you were searching for VM throughput testing on Azure, or you may have just watched the previous video where I showed this architecture here based on Azure Virtual WAN, where some blue spokes used the Virtual Hub router and some red spokes used the Azure Firewall. I'd like to dive into a follow-up topic here, which is around throughput testing the components of the Virtual WAN Hub and of course, this throughput testing is applicable for many scenarios on Azure. So to do this, let's simplify our diagram. I've kept my two blue spokes here attached to VWAN. This is a secured virtual hub. I've kept my two red spokes also connected and I've left the previous routing logic in place. So blue to blue goes via my virtual hub router. Red to red goes via my Azure firewall. When you're doing throughput testing on Azure, it's important to make sure that your baseline conditions correct. So you need to use the right virtual machine SKUs, you need to turn on accelerated networking, you need to use the right tool. Fortunately, we've got this great document around virtual network bandwidth testing, and it's super straightforward to set up. So I'm gonna use some Linux-based virtual machines, follow this guide, install this application called NTTTCP, and you are off to the races. First thing I want to do before testing any centralized forwarding services, I want to establish my baseline. So I've got two virtual machines here inside of the same virtual network, appropriately large VMs to push a large amount of throughput. So you can see over here, 32 vCPU with accelerated networking turned on. And I would expect these would get in excess of 12, maybe 15 gigabits per second of network throughput. So we can see here our baseline is around about 15 gigabits per second. And I can tell you that's currently being limited by the VM SKU size. So we know that if the VMs are next to each other, the SDN can support to this, the VM can support up to this level. Uh, we know the testing methodology, this tool we talked about can support up to this. So our baseline is 15 gigabits per second. My next test is between two VMs with the same SKU type, but they're placed in different VNets and those VNets are both VNet connected to my virtual WAN hub. As per our diagram, they are configured to route traffic via the virtual hub router. So on my spoke one blue VM, I've started my test and I've connected it over here and I'm running the test to my spoke two virtual machine. And you can see I'm getting around about three gigabits per second. And if I look back into the throughput over time by looking at the network in metric within Azure Monitor for the virtual machine, I can see that even when I go look back for an hour, this is uh, one hour's worth of logs, I can see it's fairly static. It's not going up, not going down. It's pretty much around this figure. And the reason why this scale here on the axis is say in 23 gigabytes, this is actually in gigabytes per minute because the chart is in one minute intervals. And if you convert 20 gigabytes per minute into gigabits per second, you get there or thereabouts three gigabits per second. So that's showing us that if we move our VM into a different spoke, at the moment, our virtual WAN hub is offering around about three gigabits per second sustained. We know the VM is not the limiting factor here. So you might be asking, why is it that when I transfer data between the two blue spokes, do I only get a maximum of three gigabits per second? Your diagram shows 50 gigabits per second. I've seen Azure documentation that says the virtual hub router supports up to 50 gigabits per second. Well, the problem in this case is that I provisioned my virtual WAN hub quite some time ago. And this is related to our FAQ item here around a message that you may see in the portal asking you to update your router to the latest software version. If I check my North Europe hub, you can see here it's telling me I'm using an old router version. And this FAQ, unpack some of the background information around older hubs using cloud services infrastructure and newer hubs using VMSS. So it's important that I update my hub now and rerun my test. So let's go ahead and do that. There's a button here to update the router. Important to call out approximately an hour of downtime. So I'm going to kick that update off. I'll also show you how long it will take to update. Okay, we're back. A little bit of time has passed. And we can see now the virtual hub's updated. See here it says latest, fully provisioned. Feels like it took about half an hour. If we drill into the activity logs, we can see that I kicked it off about 27 minutes ago. 
and it's all completed now. And I had a running ping going. I lost about 250 packets, so there, there is some downtime, so definitely plan accordingly. So now that we've ran our upgrade on our hub, just to remind ourselves of that, I'm going to put a little star icon next to the, the virtual hub here, just to represent that it's now sort of certified and, and running the latest code. So let's kick off that, that test again. And the test that I'm going to run, just to remind you, is this blue one over here via the virtual hub router to this one here. This is the same test where we got around about three gigabits per second sustained for an hour before upgrading the hub. So we can see that the initial performance is roughly the same. I'm still getting three gigabits per second between spokes that go through the virtual hub router. But let's leave it some time and see what happens over the period of an hour or so. Okay, we are about 20 minutes into our test and we can see that the throughput now has jumped from 2.9 gigabits per second baseline to 5.5. So it's roughly doubled. Let's come back in another 30 minutes. Okay, we've time traveled another 30 minutes into the future and here we see our throughput has jumped again. So it's roughly doubled again. We're at about 10 and a half, 11 gigabits per second of throughput. A nice way of showing that is if you go to the metrics on the virtual machine here, you can see the, the throughput into that NIC it's roughly doubling, right, every 25 minutes or so. So that's from 10.15 a.m. to 10.35, so that's 20 minutes. Then from 10.35 to 11, so about another 25 minutes, doubling again, which is the expected and documented behavior. But now you can see if we get to the next point of doubling, I'm gonna cap out my virtual machine. So what I need to do is add some more virtual machines to the party. So what I've done here is I've got another virtual machine in my spoke talking to another receiver that's running NTTTCP. So I've got two VMs now and they're, they're each pushing 12 or so gigabits per second of throughput. So we should expect that if I kick off this other test, so here I'll just start the receiver on the second one, start pulling in that as well. So when this settles down, we'll see the, the accumulation of these two at the moment. So that's like seven gigabits per second. That's three. So you see across the two, we're currently getting 10 gigabits per second. But let's come back again in 30 minutes and check on it again. Okay, I'm back. And now we are really motoring. Each of my pairs of virtual machines are both sending, this one's sending 12 gig, and this one's also sending 12 gig. So now we've more than doubled. We're at uh, at least 24 gigabits per second of throughput going from one of my spoke to the other spoke. So we can see how that, that's staggered there in terms of at least doubling every 25 minutes or so. So I'm not going to take it to the full 50 gigabits per second and provision more virtual machines, but that gives you the idea of the scaling of the virtual hub router when it's in VMSS mode. We showed you how you can look at the Azure monitor metrics for a virtual machine to verify that behavior. What you can also do at a virtual WAN level, if you look inside of your hub here, inside of your VWAN, click on view metrics in Azure monitor, one of the metrics that you have access to here is the data processed by the hub router. And I can set this here to say last four hours. So again, this is another way of seeing those incremental jumps in hub processing capacity. So just for a bit of fun, let's work out how much this is costing me right now. So 24 gigabits per second, convert that into gigabytes per minute. And we're gonna time that by the cost of the virtual hub processing in VWAN. It's costing me about three pound just in bandwidth charges through my hub. So if I was to forget about these machines, leave them running all month, I'd get a bill here for over 134,000 British pounds. So if you are doing this, it does come with a don't try this at home warning, because if you were to leave them running and your boss was to get this bill, that could definitely be a career impacting event. Okay, so we know that left to its own devices, the default behavior of a VMSS virtual hub router is that we'll get that three gig baseline and then as long as we're taxing the hub router, maxing it out, it will scale up in increments. And that's part of the, the, the PaaS service, scaling efficiency, cost efficiency, et cetera. But what if you don't want to wait 25 minutes? What if you have transient bursts that perhaps only last 15 minutes where you need more than the baseline throughput? Well, this is where we need to think about something called routing infrastructure units. This is where inside of my virtual hub config over here, I can manually set the virtual hub capacity. 
So you can see here I've got all manner of options, right from two all the way up to 50. And we can see here there's a cost associated with each routing infrastructure unit. One call out here inside of the documentation, you'll notice that it's not just for bandwidth reasons why you might consider manually lifting these routing infrastructure units or RIUs. If you've got a lot of virtual machines inside of your spokes, now let's say you're running 20,000 virtual machines under normal conditions, then you should also be thinking about, I need to manually push the scale here. Same considerations for express route gateways outside of virtual WAN. And this is due to some platform behavior in terms of the amount of virtual machines that poll this service for reachability. Okay, let's wrap up. If you were looking at using Azure Virtual WAN and you were interested in how the Virtual Hub router scales up for VNet to VNet traffic. Maybe you'd seen that message in the portal about upgrading your virtual hub. Hopefully this video has given you some more context. We saw how older hub versions have this static ability to process three gigabits per second. We also learned how the VMSS based virtual hub routers now scale from three gig up to 50 gigabits per second. And we showed examples of the timelines associated and how that increments over time. Maybe you were just looking for some virtual machine throughput testing information on Azure and the use of NTTTCP. Maybe that was interesting to you. And then finally, we closed there by saying, if you weren't happy with that three gig baseline, and maybe you had a requirement for a faster uplift in the baseline, we showed you how you could pin that static capacity. But hopefully a part of this video has helped you and I will speak to you in the next one.